uh, Mosin and Jamal and you watch Afghan news. Hundreds of protesters rallied in Afghanistan's capital on Tuesday, vowing revenge for last week's assassination of former President Burhan Rabbani and accusing Pakistan's powerful spy agency of involvement in his killing. Under tight security, the three-hour protest passed without violence, but demonstrators vented their anger, holding up large posters of Rabbani, the government's top peace negotiator, and enchanting death to Pakistan, death to the Taliban. They blamed Pakistan's military-led director of inter services intelligence for involvement in Rabbani's killing and accused it of colluding with the Taliban to destabilize Afghanistan and derail a fledgling peace process. Rabbani was killed in his Kabul home last Tuesday by a suicide bomber posing as a Tal Taliban envoy carrying a message of peace from the group's senior leadership. The protest was organized by Amrullah Saleh, the former chief of national director of security, who stepped down last year in protest at the government's efforts to negotiate with the Taliban, which he said was a disgrace. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's intelligence agency said on, t on Monday it had arrested a key figure in last week's assassination of ex-president Burhan Rabbani and suggested the Taliban senior leadership may have been involved. The national director of security said an Afghan suspect had revealed that last Tuesday's suicide bombing that killed Rabbani, the government's top peace negotiator, was plotted outside the country. Zia, deputy head of the NDAs, told a hastily arranged news conference late on Monday that he would not identify the arrested men to avoid jeopardizing the investigation. Rabbani, who became president soon after the fall of the Soviet-backed government during the early 1990s, was killed at his Kabul home by a suicide bomber claiming to be carrying a message of peace from the Taliban leadership. Zia suggested that quite sure the Taliban's leadership council may have played a role in Rabbani's killing and said the NDAs would recommend to President Hamid Karzai that he push for the investigation to be taken beyond Afghanistan's borders. A suicide car bombing in front of a provincial police chief's office in Lashkarga, city of southern Helmand province on Tuesday killed two civilians and wounded 26 others, including 10 police, Daoud Ahmadi, a spokesman for Helmand governor, said. Taliban spokesman Qari Yusuf Ahmadi claimed responsibility for the attack elsewhere. The interior ministry said in a statement that a would-be suicide bomber and three associates were killed when explosives were accidentally detonated while preparing for a suicide attack in eastern Ghazni province on Monday. The ministry also said that Afghan security forces and coalition troops killed 13 insurgents and detained 33 more in 10 operations across eight provinces over the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Nidolite International Security Stance Force said in a statement that Afghan and foreign troops killed three insurgents in Char Bulak district of northern Balkh province on Monday. ISAF aided an airstrike in Saidabad district of Eastern Waldak province killed a key Taliban leader on Monday. The Afghan Foreign Ministry on Tuesday summoned Pakistan's ambassador to Afghanistan to protest to send a cross-border shelling into the country's eastern provinces. The Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Ambassador Muhammad Sadiq was summoned and told to ask his government to immediately stop artillery shelling. The Afghan Defense Ministry also expressed concern at the Pakistani shelling and warned it was ready for a tit for tat response if the shelling was not stopped. The move came after Pakistani security forces fired over 300 rockets into the Afghan provinces of Kunar and Nuristan, with Afghan officials claiming the shelling caused loss of life and property while several people had fled their homes. Sadiq also confirmed he was summoned to the Afghan foreign ministry. The Taliban are rejecting claims that they or any of their allies have ties to the Pakistani government, saying that it has no basis in Pakistan. The claim in a statement on Tuesday runs contrary to U.S. and international assertions that the Taliban retain numerous safe havens and bases in Pakistan's tribal areas used to stage attacks into Afghanistan. The Taliban also reject U.S. charges that the Haqqani network, a key affiliate, has ties to Pakistan's intelligence service, saying the network founder Jalaluddin Haqqani Khani is a key member of the Taliban leadership. The Taliban statement appears to be an attempt to give the Pakistani government some breathing room as Islamabad comes under increasing pressure to take action against insurgents within its borders. Two subway trains collided in Shanghai on Tuesday, injuring over 240 passengers 
Chinese local media reported the Shanghai Metro said on the Weibo microblogging site that one of its trains suffered equipment failure at 2.10 p.m. local time, which then led a station of officers to manually direct approaching trains. The collision occurred near the Yu Yuan station in central Shanghai at 2.51 p.m., according to online statements by the Shanghai Metro, a statement television broadcaster. A state television broadcaster said there were over 240 passengers with injuries. In July, 40 people were killed after two bullet trains crashed in Wenzhou in eastern China, triggering public fury and raising question marks over technology promoted as a symbol of the nation's growing powers. An overloaded bus carrying over 100 school children on a field trip overturned on the main motorway in the Pakistan's Punjab province Monday evening, killing over 30 children. According to local media, three teachers, the principal of the school and the bus driver were also killed in the accident. The bus carrying students from a high school in Faisalabad was returning from Kalar Kahar after a field trip when the bus overturned. Television channels said 105 students and teachers were aboard the bus when its brakes failed. Nearly 45 Five students, mostly aged between 12 and 13, had received minor injuries, with up to 30 receiving serious injuries. The district coordination officer of Chakwal, the town nearest to the site of the accident, confirmed the casualties, saying the bus had been certified for a load of 70 people and it had been overloaded with 110 people. Libyan provisional government forces have closed in on Muammar Gaddafi loyalists hold up and served one of the last two bastions of the deposed leader. The advance on Monday from this to about two kilometers from the center of Gaddafi's hometown raised hopes that the National Transitional Council was one step closer to claiming full control of the fractured country. NATO aircraft launched airstrikes against positions of Gaddafi loyalists and served, paving the way for the deep push by the NTC fighters. On the western Ages of CERT on Monday, NTC fighters and Gaddafi loyalists traded heavy machine gun fire, rocket pro propelled grenades, and artillery rounds. Meanwhile, humanitarian organizations have raised the alarm over conditions for civilians cut off in CERT and in Baniwali to the south. Syrian forces backed by tanks and helicopters stormed into the central town of Rastan on Tuesday to crush army deserters who are fighting back after months of mostly peaceful protests against President Bashar al-Assad residents said. Dozens of armored vehicles entered the town of 40,000 which lies on the highway to Turkey near the city of Homs after tanks and helicopters pounded it with heavy machine guns. Though through the hours of darkness. Hundreds of soldiers who have refused orders to fire on pro protesters have formed the Khalid bin al-Walid battalion named after the Arab conqueror of Syria and Rastan. The force led by Captain Abdul Rahman Sheikh has some tanks with Colonel Riyad al-Assad, the most senior military defector, being active in the area. The rebel soldiers have attacked army bus buses and road blocks manned by troops and pro-Assad militiamen known Shabiha. And the United States Senate has reached a deal to avert a government shutdown and make billions of dollars of it available to victims of recent natural disasters. The deal made on Monday would end a standoff that has threatened disaster aid delivery to thousands of citizens and put the government at risk of having to shut down operations for the third time this year. The tough battle over the deal is unlikely to quell concerns that the current Congress is unable to pass even basic legislation without a fight ahead of tougher decisions to come over the budget in the next few months. Earlier on Monday, the Federal Emergency Management Agency said that its disaster fund was running low but will likely only run out by the end of the week. And that's all for now. Thanks for staying with us.